Hello everybody and welcome back to Farming Simulator 22. So today what we're going to do is we're going to continue with our planting. We have to plant the corn in every single field. This field here has been done. It's the only one which has been done. Go away birds. Get out of my crop. And yes, we also need to mulch and cultivate the olive grove. So this is the next field to be planted, which a worker is going to do. However, I do need to repair the planter first of all. It has been mentioned by many of my viewers that they would like to see my planter fixed. So we shall fix it, because it just makes sense to fix something which is broken. Uh, but I still don't know if it actually makes a difference. I'll, obviously, it shows us being fully repaired, but if we use it broken, it still seems to plant the crop no problem at all. Maybe it's consuming more seed because it's inefficient or whatever. Uh, I really don't know, but it just doesn't seem to make a difference. Anyway, yeah, let's just go around the corner. We're going to have to put it into our little workshop. There we go. And, oh, there's that yellow car. Oh, good, it's turned left. <laughs> it usually crashes into me because I pull out in front of it. What a lot of stuff. So we'll repair anything that needs to be repaired, except for weights, because what can you do? paint them. Uh, repair this for £2,828. Yeah, it must only be... Oh, look, I've got a, an achievement. Fix me up. And we do have the baler, which could do with a repair. £4,065. So there we go. It's all good. So as we're going to be passing the JCB, which currently has all the fertiliser and the seed, I will get this refilled. It gets through the seed very quickly. Fertiliser probably won't be a problem, but since we're going to another field after this, it just makes sense to make sure it is totally full. However, we'll make sure we have as much as possible, so the piece I'll do here can be done straight away, so that the worker can just continue without getting stuck on trees. Right, that's all working very well. We might be planting at a faster speed, actually. I'm not too sure exactly. I don't know what we were doing before. It just feels faster. So maybe it does restrict your speed. It isn't a direct planter, so it shouldn't have a problem when it gets to the grass. It shouldn't start planting over it. I hope. I will just do a quick test here. Let's see what happens if I put it down in the grass. Nothing. Okay, that's fine. So yeah, we'll just head back up. And then the work can take over using our lovely 8R. And yet, again, the frame rate drop when I look in this direction, I don't know what it is. It's probably the amount of trees that we have. It's fine looking that way, and it's fine in other areas on the map, so it must be the trees. Or maybe the vineyard. I don't know. Okay, so we only have 24% seed left. Don't want to crush my eggs. Park it over here. I'll open the hopper. And there we go. So, seed first of all. And then we can boom out, and we can do the fertilizer as well. Kind of at risk of losing that seed bag. It's really sitting on the end. Okay, right. So we have seed and we have fertilizer. We're ready to go. At least the worker is. Close the hopper up. Lift up. And I'll get it back to the starting position for the worker to take over. I just need to keep an eye on the notifications because uh, it may well get through all the seed in this one session. Lovely. So if we go over to the pickup truck, we should find that I have got a few pallets of eggs and a flail. Uh, I'm not going to take any more eggs just because the price isn't that good, but since we're going in that direction, I might as well sell some because I'm now using the pickup truck and the trailer to transport all of the compact machinery for the vineyard and for the olive grove. So I'll see you over at the farm shop. A deer. 
It did the right thing. It ran out of the road. Okay, as long as I don't buy my flail. <laughs> that would just ruin everything. Uh, and very strange. So, how much can we make? A few thousand? As I said, the price is pretty low. It's only three and a half thousand pounds for a thousand litres, which really is poor. I prefer to have at least five thousand pounds for a thousand litres. But there we go, sixteen. It doesn't come across as bad. And I wouldn't have even sold them if we didn't have many chickens, but because we do have so many chickens. Hello, dear. Yeah, uh, we don't really need to worry too much about it. We've got loads of food for them. The eggs are very cheap to produce. And we can go up here where we'll find our fen tractor. Flail on the front, cultivator on the back, although it looks like it hasn't grown that much. The vineyard has grown much more. Let's just see if it's actually grown enough to flail. Hmm, it probably will have some effect on it. Possibly. If it doesn't, then I'll just take it off. The cultivator is here, so let's just jump into the Sorry, let's jump into Olive. I was going to call it by its model number, which would have been very, very uh, inappropriate. We've named this tractor. Well, I've named this tractor. don't know if everybody approves. Is naming tractors a bit much? Maybe it's taking it a step too far? I don't know. But I'm sure I'm about to find out when I read the comments. Okay, then. Yeah, I did think the grass would have grown more, but not to worry. We'll burn less fuel. Let's just see first of all if it's actually going to have an effect. Hmm. I think not. I don't think that's doing anything at all. Nope. So it will need to be flailed. Uh, we could even wait and, and not do the cultivating now. But it just, this is a, a time when, sort of got some free time, when we get to harvest time we're going to be flat out. Just do this area here. But yeah, I'll cultivate all of the, the rows between them. We'll make it look all good. And we'll get 5% extra yield as well. We're into the second to last one. As you saw, I have refilled the planter with seed. And yes, that'll be done in no time. So we have another field of corn. The final field is this one just down here. And for this year, we are gonna plant the whole field, even though it's not very big. Eventually, it's gonna be moved. Yes, the rest of this field is gonna be over there. So I do need to, in fact, we could do it now because we probably do have time to plow it and plant it. So, yeah, this is going to be the biggest this field is ever going to be. Because this year it will be all of this and all of that. Next year it will just be all of that. And where the tractor is now will be an extension to the olive grove. Because we're going to just do stuff in a big way. There's no point having really small vineyards and really small olive groves. Because it's just not effective. It's not profitable. We have to go big. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, of course, we need to make the money first. But I think, well, I, I think I pretty much know that the corn is going to be worth it because we're going to do it as maize. 
maize silage. I did some maize silage before and it was extremely profitable. This time it's going to be probably twice the amount. Yeah, it will be twice the amount, uh, if, if not more. So, providing the price is right when we sell, we could be extremely rich. Anyway, there we go, it's all cultivated. And um, yes, it was all sprayed in the previous episode. So it just needs to be potentially flailed. In fact, it doesn't even need to be flailed, I don't think, because it's probably not going to make much of a difference since it has been cultivated and sprayed. But the option is there if we want to take it. The next big thing as well is also going to be a shed for this field. We do need to put a very, very small shed up. I've looked at the sheds available. They're all too big. So we're just going to have to wait for a mod. I think that's going to be the best way of going about things. So let's get back to the farm. We'll get one of our tractors. I need a plow. Actually, was there a plow in the sale? There might have been. There was. How convenient. Uh, I think we should sell our plow. We'll buy that one. I'll buy it now, just in case it disappears. Uh, £5,953. And it can go on to the John Deere. Even though I'm sure the McCormick is quite capable. But since we have the power, we might as well use it. There it is. Our new plow. Can't wait to use that. Uh, yes, we'll bring the small plow on the tractor. It's going to look kind of weird, actually, having a three-furrow plow on that big 8R. And did it finish the field successfully? Yes, it did. Well done, worker. There we go. Uh, so, let's just run across there. This is going to be a good cornfield. As it was fertilising at the same time as planting, I'm guessing we are fully fertilised because I did the green manure. I hope we are, otherwise it was wasted. We are. Look at that. Uh, so I just need to spread this field and of course the one we're about to work in which has had nothing but it will get one application with the planter. But spreading won't have to happen until about June. I will get this as full as possible first of all. Then we'll take it off. Unless, of course, I put the plough on the front to transport it. That might be a, a better thing to do. Otherwise, we're going to be making the trip twice. Yeah, we'll keep the planter... Uh, let's just think here. Yes, we can. We can keep the planter on. Because even though we're going to attach it to the, uh, the end of it, it still goes on the back of the tractor. Whereas the plough can go on either end for transportation. There we go, so that's full. Good. Uh, no! What are you doing? Stop! Okay, I've learned a lesson here. I've seen this before. I didn't realise why it was doing it. Don't turn the engine off while still pressing the key to lower the boom. Put it in a nice open area. I guess the weight might be an issue. Hopefully the tractor is heavy enough to control that plough without a weight. Not ideal though. It's all because I'm wanting to do two things in one go. And there it is, my three furrow plough. If anybody does know the reason why I have a frame rate problem looking in one direction, I would love to hear from you, because it would be so nice to get rid of it. Okay, I'll see you over at the store. How much can we get for it? Wow, I've never seen one which is in bad paint condition and in bad mechanical condition. So we'll just repair it mechanically. 
I'm not too sure if we get the repainting money back. That'd be it would be an interesting test. Actually, let's just let's just do a quick test here. First things first. I'll just keep it at that. Save the game. Okay, so it is £983 to repaint. We're currently being offered £1,170. Yep, looks like it's worth repainting. And I got an achievement. Interesting. <laughs> uh, I didn't actually know it was worth repainting, but I think we do get a very small percentage back for doing that. Okay, everything else seems to be in order. So I'll just put that plough on. We're going to have to repair that plough as well. I didn't check and see exactly how worn it was, but I'm sure it will have at least half wear. Really hope we can run this plough without front weight. But it is a bit of a risk going with that one. Uh, yes, very worn out. £530 to repair. We won't bother with the paintwork. That's good. We're ready. Let's get over to the field. These little strobe lights do seem quite hard to see compared to a beacon. It might be completely different in real life. Maybe it's the angle I'm looking at them. Let me know what you think. I'm sure there'll be many people watching who have seen these in real life. I've only ever seen tractors with beacons. I've never actually seen a tractor with these little strobes. So, I don't know if it's a really new thing. I live in the countryside and I see tractors all the time. But yeah, I've only seen beacons. Or is it John Deere exclusive? Right, let's drop this down. Take the planter off. Uh, I guess it could even extend the field, but actually, yeah, down there it gets a bit bouncy, which could cause several problems for our forager. There we go. So, do we get the frame rate over here? I don't think we do. No, it's just a nice consistent 60 frames per second. So, I think it's just because of all the stuff we have around the yard. Plus the trees, which made it worse. <laughs> I shouldn't have put so many trees in. 160 I planted. Okay. There we go. We're going to have to turn with the plan on the ground just to create the field shape. But I can confidently say no more olives in this direction. They're all going to go straight down there towards the road. We must think about the forager as well. When we're coming up here with the forage harvester, with a tractor alongside, or maybe a lorry, we need to have the turning space. So, yeah, we can't really have much of a pinch point, which is going to be really difficult. Mm, yes, it's always going to have a, a V-shape at the top here. Plowing on nicely. Not much left to do. Uh, you might have seen that the ground is fairly uneven in areas. It doesn't even want to plow it. So if it won't plow it, it probably won't plant it. But then it's just a very small area just here, so it doesn't matter too much. It's not really going to have any kind of impact. And it's going to be difficult anyway to harvest this corner, so 
I'm not too worried about it if it doesn't plant. It's just nice to be able to extend this field. And yeah, I wouldn't have wanted to do this with the three for a plough. It would have done it. But this is just right, and we'll probably keep hold of this plough now forever. I might have said that about the three furrow, I'm not too sure. Uh, but yeah, we'll keep the five furrow. It's just the right size for all of our equipment. Now, at the moment, we don't really have much space at the end of the olive grove, so it would be a good idea just to not plant right up to it. Otherwise, yeah, I'm going to be driving in the crop to harvest the olives. So we just need enough space for the harvester to manoeuvre and those harvesters can turn really tight so it doesn't really need to be that much space just enough to get around the corner and into the next line the next row anyway we are pretty much done lovely nice tractor nice plow and I was extremely lucky with this plow because uh, when it first came up I said, oh, we don't need another plow, but it's fine. Uh, but actually, yeah, that was wrong. So handy. Now I can pop this on the back. I just hope I've got enough seed. It should be enough, because it is 100% full. Yep, 660 litres. And it's not a massive field. So it would be surprising if we don't have enough. Best way of doing this is probably just start at the bottom, go up to the top first of all, and then work our way across. Yeah, I'm sure that since I've repaired the planter we can work much faster. It must have been restricting the speed that we can work at. That must be what happens if you don't fix up your machines. The tractors, I think, lose horsepower. It looks like the implements just prevent you from going at its normal speed. So that was my concern. Because it's not level, it's lifting up the front of the planter. And of course it's not planting at all. Downhill, it might do. We'll have to see. But that's problematic. I could well pay to level the ground. Just depends how expensive that's going to be. Let's just give it a go. I'll save the game first of all. Got level, soften, slope, raise and lower. So yeah, it's gonna be level. Make this tool a bit bigger. Hard to see that it's not. It doesn't look that uneven. Oh, it puts it back to grass. Not to mention the cost. Super expensive. Um. Maybe I should be doing soften. There is actually a mod I think which allows you to do this for free. Yeah, it's lowering it. Yeah, I should have softened it. I'll reload. Let's try this again. It's quite expensive. You can't see too much happening, but I think that will have had quite an effect. So let's just get the tractor started up again. And I'll try this. Yeah, so not having the front weight is a bit of a disadvantage. It does struggle a bit. And yeah, it's improved it there because it didn't do anything before. But it's not good enough. I'm quite mindful that it is just so expensive to do all of this to the ground. So uh, let's go for it one more time. Try and really level it out. Spend a few hundred pounds on it. See if that has fixed it. It looks smooth. Well, I suppose there's a bit of a mound over there. Uh, right. One more try. Well, it's an improvement. If I kept going at it with that, we would get it super smooth. Uh, maybe the planter is the worst thing to be using on it. The drill is probably better. Anyway, I'm going to continue a time-lapse, make it a bit smoother. Hopefully I can get it done. 
So I'll see you in a second. That wasn't too bad, if we go the other way across the field it seems to be much better. And I'm sure as well the harvester won't be quite as sensitive as the planter. Even a drill might not be as sensitive, because uh, it's a big wide thing. The drill seems to follow the ground more. Uh, so how much space do we need to turn? About... that should do it. Not me. The, the harvester. <laughs> yes, I've gone and crashed into an olive tree immediately. Yeah, the thing is, we just need to be able to harvest without driving in the corn. And this field looks so much nicer when it starts to grow in the next episode. Can look so different when the olive trees come all the way down to here. They can go into the grassland, almost to the road. Uh, it's obviously ideal to leave enough space to turn with the harvester without going into the road, but it's not a very busy road, so it probably doesn't matter too much. I've just got to use all the space I can just here. And that is all of the corn planting done in every field. So it's going to be really, really hectic when I come to do it, the harvesting. It probably isn't all going to fit into the pit, but the difference this time is I'll have a proper leveller. I'm not just going to use the tractor's wheels. We'll level it from the start. I don't think you can use a worker though, can you, to actually level the pit? You can't tell it just to drive backwards and forwards. Anyway, yeah, I'll grab that plough over there and we'll take all of this over to the farm. That's all the planting done for another year. Unless we put some winter crops in. Okay, try and squeeze this into there, and as for the plough, yes, with it being bigger now, it's going to be much harder to store, maybe just outside. Yeah, I probably will keep it outside. So, there we go. Put the plough somewhere over here. This should be good enough. There we go. Uh, so, I don't think there's anything else to do today. Everyone seems to be happy. All the animals. Uh, there is probably another pallet to move. And the glitched pallet, which I have still not succeeded with. Yes, I've been trying to get it out. But it just will not come out of the ground. It's completely stuck. I tried to get it out with the telehandler's forks and the super strength, and nothing will persuade it out. The same as this one over here. That one's really stuck. got little heaters. You lucky hens. And you've still got plenty of food. So yes, I'm going to move on to the next day just to see what we have in the used machinery and so we can see the fields with a germinated crop. So we'll just run over here. And soon we're going to also buy a chicken coop, a bigger chicken coop, uh, instead of, well possibly instead of the small one. So we're going to have even more eggs. Right. Yep, look at that. Lovely and green. Pretty sure that is the first growth stage. It does seem quite tall. But it looks so nice. 
just a sea of green. And I mentioned the uh, the field next to the olives. That should look so much nicer as well. Oh yes, look at that. Looking good. I'm stuck in an olive tree. Uh, so yes, I think it'll be about October time, September, October time, when we can start to harvest these. I'm looking to rent one of these. I'll just show you the one I have in mind. Uh, yeah, I think it was the Crone. Very expensive, extremely big. We'll just take take a look at the headers, but look at these 1,156 horsepower. That's crazy. Yeah, forage harvester headers go to the biggest. Nine meters. We could also have a new Holland then, or a John Deere. They all have nine meters. As that is the case, and in fact, class has a nine meter as well. Yes, as that's the case. Maybe it's not worth going for the most expensive. I, I've always wanted to have the John Deere one, so I think we'll probably go for that. Look pretty amazing. Even that is 770. Can be upgraded to 970. So there we go. Many exciting things coming in the near future. For now, though, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. And until next time, see you again soon. Bye for now.